Well, hello everyone. Um, today I'm in conversation with Anna Turula, who is in Poland, um, and we're going to talk about her virtual exchange teaching and research. But before we get stuck in, Anna, please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, where you work, and what your role is. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm based at the Pedagogical University in Krakow. Well, we are no longer pedagogical. We are Yukon University. I'm a teacher trainer and I'm a telecollaborative teacher. And currently I chair the Department of Technology Enhanced Language Education. So Anna, you've been a, a, a COIL or virtual exchange uh, enthusiast and teacher for quite a long time. Tell us a little bit about your research and teaching on the topic of virtual exchange. Um, uh, I've done some um, uh, so far, mainly about teaching presence and all the other presences um, in telecollaborative exchanges. And my latest project, which I'm particularly um, enthusiastic about, uh, is a series of interviews with Polish teachers who do virtual exchanges. And I'm absolutely amazed by the diversity that they offer. And uh, I just I haven't analyzed the data yet, but I can see several patterns and I think sometimes it shows how people started who they were inspired by and mainly may maybe who were who they were trained by because this is also very important so what so you're you're I can hear the excitement in your voice about trends and patterns can you give us an idea I know you say you haven't analyzed the data yet but what are you seeing I mean has it really taken off in in Poland then and what are some of the patterns and trends that you're seeing? Well, um, I, I've, I've been able to find uh, 20 teachers. So <laughs> thinking about scale, it's, it's not um, Im impressive or it's not huge, but uh, there is something. And um, the, the teachers can be divided into, into groups. Um, some of us are teacher trainers like myself and uh, what they do are virtual exchanges that supplement the syllabi of, of teacher training courses. Um, some of us uh, are um, uh, language teachers and um, uh, they work um, at uh, language teaching centers at universities. And then uh, they incorporate CLIL because they teach English, but they teach English to uh, various students. Some of them are business students, pharmacy students. So depending on who they teach, they incorporate the, the content. So uh, I see a lot of potential in incorporating CLIL um, into the virtual exchanges, because then you have those interesting topics that you can talk about. Um, I'm not saying teacher training is not interesting, but uh, teacher training rarely goes beyond um, uh, university walls. And so I'm looking at, at exchanges who are actually, they open the doors of universities. They, they make universities thin walled. And, and this is pretty amazing. Uh, there are also exchanges carried out by teachers of content subjects whose knowledge of English is enough to carry so, such exchanges. Um, they happen at uh, universities of economics or technical universities. So basically, there are several groups and there are several themes and there are there are a lot of values um, uh, attached to it. But there's one thing in common. All the teachers think that they are doing something exceptional. Mm. So I'm, I'm hearing that um, it's evolving all the time and it's very flexible because, I mean, years ago, even 30 years ago, it was mainly the language teachers who were the pioneers who were trying to create that authentic space for their students to practice um, English, probably, because that seems to be the, the lingua franca in, in most cases, although no, not only. But it's going beyond that, isn't it now, Anna? It is, and it has uh, for a long time. I think that it started around the conference uh, we had in Krakow, um, uh, the one that I had the pleasure and the honor of organizing. And I think that uh, the, the title of the conference was um, uh, Virtual exchange, exchange Across Disciplines. When was so that, it, Anna? How many years? It was the 2018 Krakow, um, the Uni Collaboration Conference. Uh, but I think that the, the title of the conference reflected what had been happening already. And to, Unofficially, you mean, kind of behind the scenes, people were doing. Yeah, that. And so I think that that, uh, that the people behind the uni collaboration uh, had already been scouting for such initiatives. So, so you you can read 
um, uh, papers by, by uni collaboration members describing um, such cases. But then during the conference, we had people reporting uh, on projects happening at, at other universities. And so um, um, there is um, a project called X Culture, and it has been around for some time. It had been around before our Krakow conference, uh, a project in which um, there are um, uh, business uh, um, telecollaborations um, carried out. So, so it's spreading and, and uh, it makes me very proud and very happy. What about on a personal level, Anna? You say you've done a, about a dozen, if not more, um, collaborative exchanges. Tell us a bit about your um, experience and how you incorporate or integrate it into your teaching and, and uh, research. Um, in my uh, virtual exchanges, I try to look for the connection between teacher training and civic education, because the latter is my own personal interest, and, and I'm looking at um, several ways of incorporating um, what Bayram calls, calls the politische Bildung um, uh, into um, language studies and, and teacher training. So several of my telecollaborations included this element of, of civic education in one uh, that uh, I'm particularly happy with. Uh, we ask the students to look for problems uh, in the world around and then they of divide. There are solutions. many. <laughs> yeah, but the, some of them can be solved uh, on the local level. And uh -huh. uh, the students looked at the problems. Some of them were connected to teacher training and, and being a future teacher. And then in those international teams, they devised solutions and they were encouraged to try to implement these solutions uh, after the telecollaboration um, had ended. And, and some, some students actually went for it. Uh, which I'm very proud um, uh, about because this is what, what should be happening. Well, well we, we should be looking at ways of changing the world, even at the local level. And uh, virtual exchange seems to be a very good context for, for this. Also, uh, had, yes. mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, carry on. I've had my share of failures. And uh, uh, this is uh, where um, the telecollaboration proves it, its greatest potential. Because even if you fail, there is so much to be learned um, in the exchange that you know it cannot be underestimated. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you can't learn unless you fail, that's for sure. I just want to go back to what you were saying about, um, I'm hearing that um, these exchange projects are going beyond the walls of the university and out into the community, which I guess is is what everyone's trying to achieve. So sort of break down the wall between academia and civil society is that would that be true to say that that's been happening more and more yeah and uh, i hope it is happening more more and more um it's you know this this crossing borders and um, uh, making the the university thin walled and and seeing the the role of the university as ancillary to 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 the society mm -hmm. um i think that, that that's the new trend uh, I hope it grows because if it doesn't, um, the universities may become obsolete in the, mm. in the modern world. I see. Is it possible um, to assess the the impact that this is, is having? I mean, I know it's early days, but are you able to give some insight into the impact of this moving into civil society? I don't know the scale of the impact. I've never researched it. And uh, I think that um, it would be a huge research effort uh, if it were to give to offer such an insight, because um, telecollaborations are such dynamic systems. And uh, what many of us hope, they affect people's attitudes and attitudes are extremely difficult to measure, not to mention that they may <laughs> They may appear years after the telecollaboration. That's honestly what I hope for uh, in the case of my students. I hope that after several years, they'll be coming back to the experience and um, the experience will model the way they approach the world. They, they, they uh, feel the responsibility towards the, the world. But I don't know at the point of telecollaboration, we never know what's going to happen. <laughs> That's another good thing, another exciting thing about virtual exchanges. Mm. So Anna, uh, do you have any future plans you'd like to share with us before I let you go? 
I'm uh, working on this project of mine. Uh, um, in addition to interviewing teacher, I've, uh, teachers, I've been analyzing uh, telecollaborative and e-tweening tasks. I'm looking at uh, how well um, this can fit this uh, kind of model, which is a combination of technology-enhanced task-based language teaching and critical pedagogy. So uh, I see a lot of potential in the virtual exchange, but I'm still looking for the numbers to prove it. Thank you, Anna, for sharing your time with us today.